Hey guys, welcome to another video. Stuck in a mild traffic jam. Thought I would take this opportunity, quiet opportunity to talk to you all. Because the faster I go, the louder it gets. I got me a forerunner. I want to explain why I got me a forerunner. What's wrong with this one so far? And uh, what I think of it, basically. So it's going to be a video of me talking, you listening. So a little background behind this, what's happening and whatnot. Found this car, car, truck, SUV, whatever. I don't know what to call it. I don't want to upset anyone. Vehicle. Found this vehicle on the Facebook marketplace in Houston, Texas. Took me about two weeks of looking. Every day, every hour, several different platforms. Uh, Craigslist, Facebook, uh, you know, several dealers, cars.com, whatnot, whatever, ev everywhere. Spoke with the owner several times. He sent me pictures of the frame. Yes, I, I saw the frame before I actually went there. I'm, you know, I actually flown in from Chicago to Houston yesterday, Ubered 40 miles or so west of Houston, met on a parking lot, you know, I liked it, well, obviously because I'm driving it back 1100, 1100 miles back home, and you know, it's, it's not all rainbows and sunshine, it does have issues, it, it has 130... 134,000 miles now and oh yeah this is the V8 version 07 V8 and well I guess it's not a forerunner it's a it's a two runner it's rear, rear wheel drive only it's the sport version which is the middle I guess the the kind of the poor man's version no heated seats obviously no four wheel lock and stuff like that no sunroom or sunroof, uh, moonroof, sunroof, whatever. Which I thought it did have it. I didn't notice in the pictures. Didn't ask. Whatever my loss. But I actually don't care that it's only rear wheel drive because well I'm not. I didn't buy it for off roading. I bought it for daily usage. You know, vacation trips. I can put my dogs in the back and I can tow light vehicles if you've been following my channel you probably know remember uh, Luke we bought a Subaru Impreza and we intend to strip it down make it lighter you know make it a race car and tow it to the events in case of you know it breaks whatever we can always tow it back so that, that's the reason so what's wrong with this so far? What, I, what I've noticed. Are we getting off the highway now? What's going on over here? I see cops. I guess we are. I don't know. Anyways, what I've noticed right away on the parking lot is noise. What seems like or seemed like at the time from the rear tires. They're those uh, off-roady tires. And the way you, you can tell if it's tire noise could be bearings too, could be rear differential. Which now I'm thinking it is rear differential, which is which is a bummer. But I'm hoping it's gonna be the tires because you know obviously the thread is it's not your conventional touring tire thread. It's the off-roady thread and the thread is not even. It's got these uh scales going on you know it's not an even thread it's got it's it's uneven these tire they're all tires too these tires were put on used from a different vehicle so who knows what happened and the fronts are different too so we got two different types of tires all right we got we got uh like five cop cars another five or so the construction you know uh pickup trucks with the lights and all 
and then when I see six or more plows the big highway plows but there's no snow on the road I guess they got hit pretty hard a couple days ago I'm in Arkansas by the way anyways so you know and just I assume it's the tires it is this whiny road noise coming from the back because of the of the how the tires look but now that I, I've driven I actually driven it yesterday I drove it for 350 miles and today for about a hundred miles so you know I, so what, what that's 450 miles so you know it's enough to kind of get to know the vehicle so I, I'm hoping it's not the rear diff there's another whiny noise which I've noticed right away it's, it's very loud it sounds like your power steering pump is going out you know the and goes up with RPM you know and can't really have a listen you know you need a stethoscope or a long screwdriver put it against the power steering pump or something else whatever it could be a, an alternator also don't know sounds like it's coming from the timing cover but I don't know it you know what component inside the timing cover could be making that whiny noise so don't know hopefully we'll make it 650 miles to go only so not even halfway so th those are the two major things that kind of worry me if I'm gonna make it or not we got no high beams both are out let's hope it's the light it's the light bulbs got a TPMS light uh, sensor that's out inside of one of the tires or wheels and there's the little display telling you the range mileage range temperature outside inside clock the light the little bulb bulb is out and what else I think that is it I've got a little stone chip on the windshield I'm gonna try and fix that before it spreads and we got an average mileage of I did not reset this 19.6 had 19.7 yesterday I went to actually slept in the back you know it was nice no no it wasn't if you don't know what it's like to sleep in the back of the the, the seats flip down so you, there's plenty of room if you sleep kind of angled sideways but if you don't if you never slept in the back of a forerunner take a nap on some plywood then you'll know all right well now we're just they all left the pickup trucks and the plows besides except the police okay I guess we're we're about to move are we yeah oddly enough there's a forerunner right behind the cops leading the leading the way again if you've been watching some of my videos you may have noticed a an old BMW 530i premium version which I've had for almost seven years beautiful car the e39 um, you know engines uh, cars BMWs are just awesome straight six engines smooth comfortable all the bells and whistles you know besides the obvious you know like automatic windows up and down all around you know full power seats on the premium version you've got the headrest up and down but you know, not like you need that uh, you also get the heated steering wheel and rain sensor flip the wipers on and depends on the rain on the water on the windshield the wipers just do their thing right you don't gotta touch anything and I'm sure I'm missing something whatever so I mean it hurt me I actually sold it it hurt me it still hurts me uh, <laughs> now I don't have it anymore it was a nice car in great shape 118,000 miles uh, but yeah it's just not practical for me anymore for, for my needs so I had to go if I had the room space you know and and, and money obviously I would keep it but it is what it is and I was afraid that I'm gonna whatever I'm gonna buy next that I'm not gonna like 
and I'm just gonna be pissed at myself for you know selling the BMW but this is my first ever SUV and I like it I love it it's it's awesome drivability is surprisingly surprisingly not SUV ish if you kind of get what I'm saying so this version the sport version has the hydraulic suspension I forget there's a name for it I, I, I forget literally there is there's fluid inside the shock there's lines going across the frame and you got some solenoids or some something along the frame and whatever it go it, it equates to a softer ride especially on the highway and it, it shows it for maybe you guys the forerunner guys can tell me I did drive a 2020 forerunner v6 obviously they only made the v8s from 03 to 09 and the vvt was on the 05 to 09 so this is the 07 v8 with vvt so it has 200 and 260 some some horsepower and 305 maybe more uh, uh torques so so that's the whole reason, you know, it's it's the, I guess, the the torquey, the most torquey foreigner you'll ever get, I guess. And because it's only rear-wheel drive, it can tow 300, 300 pounds more over the all-wheel drive uh, foreigners, which, is, which comes out to 7,300 versus the 7,000 for the four-wheel. So, that, so that, that's a plus. I'm not gonna pr probably need it, but you know, always good to have room. And with the trailer that I have gotten two weeks ago or so, I'm looking at after the strip down of the our race car, we're gonna be looking at 5,000 pounds. So, which is it's not too much. You know, it's it's probably the limit of this of this uh, of this car truck, whatever. And we're stuck again. So going back to the 2020 Forerunner, I drove it for 200 miles to Wisconsin Highway, and this drives much better. I don't know why. On different tires, front and back, you no know, bad tires in the rear, but it just wants to go straight. The 2020, I had to, I had to keep keep it straight myself. It just wanted to go sway left and right did not want to go straight it, it was it's kind of tiring you know um don't know what it is maybe you guys can tell me what's 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 with that you know is it the, the tires and stock stock configuration no modifications to anything whatsoever stock tires it i think it had like fifteen thousand miles at the time maybe twenty thousand miles so you know still semi-new this is a totally different experience as far as driving goes you know road tripping and stuff like that and I like it can't say that I don't the seating position is awesome I can adjust the steering wheel tilt and then do that you know this back and forth I'm actually the seat is actually almost all the way down I raise it up a little bit so I can see the tip of the hood I don't know it's whenever you see the hood of your car it's always for some reason feels different and this being an SUV it, it's it's nimble you know the steering is very responsive the brakes are there right away it the, this thing gives you the feedback that you want Man, this thing probably never have seen snow and I'm going over snow right now I'm sorry so this was a California car for a long time then went to Florida not sure for how many years specifically Miami and it ended up in Texas for several months and now it's gonna be in Illinois but the, the, the day I get home today so tomorrow what I'm gonna I don't care the temperature there if it's even if it's if it's 15 I'm gonna pressure wash the the undercarriage right away keep it inside so it dries up and we're gonna spray 
kind of like fluid fill but I have got this this product from Amsoil it's in cans so it comes out liquid and then it dries up and it becomes kind of like like wax basically it, it's supposed to last a few years longer than fluid film fluid film or wool, wool wax you gotta redo it every year or two this stuff supposedly stays on for four or five years well depends where you are so um i plan to spray that everywhere okay we may use chassis saver because there, there is a few you're gonna see the frame i'm gonna show you it's i'm amazed and i'm never buying a car ever from any of the rust belt states always gonna travel take the time pay the little you know a little bit of extra money uh, and buy a car from Texas, California, Florida, what what. A little bit of snow and people are going crazy. Come on. Also have a, a slight brake pulsation in the rear. Plenty of pads, rotors look good, but they are warped. To tell them apart is very simple. If when you brake and you're, you can feel the pulsation in the steering wheel. It does, you know, this number on you while pressing the brake and slowing down. Then it's the front rotors. If you're doing the same, obviously, and you, you brake and you, you feel the car doing this, or maybe even the S doing this, then it's the rears. Basically, if you feel it in the steering wheel, it's the fronts. If you don't feel it in the steering wheel, but you feel it in the car, in the seat then it's the rears i'm probably going to do some changes in here i may or may not install some heat pads whatever in the seats because i do like heated seats i don't care for the heated steering wheel i may put a different stereo in here i kind of like this one but it, it could be better we may just do some lights in the front and in the rear when I'm backing up I need oh yeah probably gonna do a radio for the rear camera so I have a screen here um, to see where I'm backing up you know hitching hitching the trailer I would like some kind of dim lights maybe some orange or, or blue lights somewhere here so I see what's going on over here so I don't have to hit the light switch during night time when I'm driving to see what I'm trying to grab or whatnot. I'm going to tint the front windows, side windows. We do have these wind side deflectors things, you know. That's nice. Fix the TPMS sensor, replace that. Check all the fluids, the engine oil is, is fresh. Definitely look at the rear diff fluid. Do a... Oh yeah, the steering the power steering fluid it's black it's bad but number one is the noises number two or not necessary not order is the frame seal up not go not with this into the well besides today into the salts of chicago of illinois without sealing sealing up the frame mm -mm. Let's go! You know, before I bought this, <clears throat> I went on uh, Facebook and I joined a few groups, Forerunner enthusiasts uh, groups. Uh, fourth, fourth generation, this is the fourth generation Forerunner. And every once in a while, there would be a guy, you know, joining the group already there, saying, hey, I just got my new forerunner first or second whatever and I'm loving it you know I had it for a few hours or a few weeks and they're, they're all loving it right and you know I was, I was thinking to myself you know we'll see about that you know we'll, we'll see if I'm gonna love it I don't know if I love it yet but uh, I do like it and I, I know why I know why there's just some some cars have these things uh, you know about them yeah you know you you start driving a certain make and then you almost never go to another you, you know 
like if you've driven a Subaru, older Subarus, not the new ones, I don't care for the new ones much, older Subarus, there's something about them, even if it's a pile of crap, it's still, there's something about those, those cars that just makes you enjoy the drive, wherever, wherever you're going, if, if it's a store or, or if it's a trip, you know, a couple hundred miles or whatever. Same thing with this, it's just something about this, that the driving experience is just different than, than say, uh, I don't know, a Chevy Aveo, you know, or, or a Toyota Corolla even, or, you know, something, something that just gets you from A to B. This is, this is not just an A to B vehicle, this is, this is a, a different experience. I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, it's just, you gotta, you gotta drive one to, to understand. It's almost drives like a agile sedan, big sedan. I guess the resp the responsiveness of it, you know. Even even the the get the accelerator, the gas pedal. I mean, you press on it, it goes. Engine is smooth. Like I said, braking right away. You don't even feel it switching gears. Same with the, the BMW that I, that I had, the E39. It had, obviously can't really compare the two. The drivability of that is also, it had heavy steering, which which I liked actually. Not like on some cars, you know, on the old Honda Accords, even from the 90s, you could just turn the steering wheel with your pinky, you know, they were so light. And I think the highway is opening up. Let's see if you can pick up on the noise. Get off the highway. Oh, you probably don't hear it. I hear it. Radio works. And if I set the volume precisely to 36, all the noises go away. Road trip update. Just did a full tank. Just driving, no idling. It was 19.6 versus 16 something with uh, overnight idling so doing 19.6 highway miles it's not too bad gotta say you know doing 65 64 65 is what i'm doing all trip so slow and steady gets you home or something like that i also had a, a minivan pass me and about 50 yards in front of me, this huge patch of ice flies up, breaks it, breaks it in smaller pieces, and the biggest, obviously, like a two feet by two feet piece, just slams into my windshield. I mean, <laughs> I thought something like wipers, maybe the windshield broke, but it didn't. Thank God. I keep forgetting to check, but. I think it's all good. I mean, it was it was just a giant slab of, of frozen ice, frozen uh, snow. Yeah. So I thought once I get home, I'll wash it because it's filthy. And once I have it on the lift, I'm gonna take a, a closer look. So see you later.